Hey friends, small groups make a big impact. This is Pastor Scott coming to you as we think about our life groups and the way God is at work. Man, I'm so excited that uh, as your group gathers at this time, we have an opportunity to just really lean into all that God has for us. In this week, we are looking together at this incredible story of one boy who steps up and says, I've got five loaves and I've got five loaves and two fish, and, and, and I'm going to share that, and let's see how that goes. And uh, in, at the end result, over 5,000 people are fed. So this week, we're thinking about generosity, about how can we bring the little bit, what seems like a little bit, put it into God's hands, and as He blesses it, and it's multiplied. But we're going to think also about how God uses this whole story in the life of the disciples. So tonight you're going to be reading from that passage from Matthew chapter 14. Um, it's part of an, an incredible cycle here where um, the, the 5,000 are fed, but in that process you're going to read about how what Jesus does there. He takes that little bit, He blesses it, but then he gives it to the disciples and invites them to minister to the people. So Jesus puts it in their hands and they serve the people. The end result is they pick up the baskets full. And wait till you, wait till you read how many baskets full they pick up. There's an incredible story there of how God works in our life when we are generous the disciples are blessed as they serve others first. So that's going to be part of what you look at tonight in that passage from Matthew chapter 14. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, now, we're also going to, in that, look at the next part right after Jesus finishes the feeding of the 5,012. Um, then he also stills a storm and he ministers to others. So there's going to be a lot that we read tonight in those passages in thinking about the generosity of how we respond when God invites us into His work by bringing our little bit of a lunch, and then He blesses and multiplies it. Now, that idea of generosity and blessing was part of the early church. And when we gather in these groups, we're doing just like the early church did. In Acts chapter 2, it says that as the Holy Spirit fell and the church was birthed, that they devoted themselves to certain things. They devoted themselves to meeting in the temple and worshiping God corporately, but they also devoted themselves to meeting house to house. And in those houses, they were praying for one another, taking their meals together. They were learning from the apostles' teachings, all the things that we are doing in life groups. So my friends, we are part of something when we meet in groups like this that has been part of the church since the very beginning in the New Testament. And in that, it says that the disciples had everything in common. They were caring for one another, bearing one another's burdens, meeting the needs of whoever had needs within the group. So I invite you tonight, as you share with one another, to think about ways that you can share with the group, how you can pray for one another, how you can support and encourage one another. One of the coolest things for me at Eagle Naz and looking at our life groups is the way that life groups have cared for one another, whether one is having a surgery or one has some needs and they're able to step in and do things in a very practical way. So I encourage you as a group to, to talk through some of those things tonight because in doing that, we are the body of Christ. We are the church in action, taking care of one another in the household of God. It's really a pretty cool thing as we think about how God has invited us to be part of a family. So tonight in your group, um, I encourage you to continue to think about your spiritual health inventory. Hopefully those things that God has stirred up in your life, you're working on those, maybe even creating some rule of life things. Tonight, maybe in your group, you'd want to share about um, maybe some victories or some challenges that you're facing. Um, I encourage you to think about that with one another. Maybe you've discovered a, a great way of reading scripture that means something to you, or a new practice of prayer, or maybe even a new podcast or something that really speaks to your heart. Share that with your group so that we can encourage one another in this journey of discipleships. So may God be with you tonight as you read the scriptures together, and we find that our small groups have a big impact in our world.